stories. Dragon Good morning, all. This is Darth Rabbit here. So, I'm coming to you today with another quick review from CMD Store in the early morning hours. I uh, found some quiet time to put together the Transformer 1 Optimus Prime quick review. But before we get into that, make sure to like, share, subscribe, all the stuff down below. Thanks again for subscribing. Let's hit 2K by Baltimore TFCon. It's November. And uh, thank you guys for all that all you guys that have subscribed to my channel enough for me let's get this turned around and take a look at transformers one optimus prime and here is chris hemsworth's transformers one optimus prime on the turntable he's number 112 in the studio series looking really really good here's a close-up of that animation look like the way that looks he converts from robot to truck mode and back again 25 steps and it says right here in the subtext, a uh, hero fulfills his destiny to become the legendary Optimus Prime. And I can't wait to see what all kind of poses we can get this guy into. Make sure to pause and scan here for your in-store box hunts. Like I said before in the B, I'm not waiting around for that stuff to hit the store. Thanks again to CMD Store for shipping this so quickly. And there's a more full animation shot. And I just can't wait to go see this myself. Let's get him out of the box and see how cool he is. What all comes in the box? Right out of the box, you get these instructions. You get the scene from Transformers 1. I will actually try to shoot that and incorporate that back into my one sheet for this awesome movie. The figure Optimus Prime without his accessories attached. He comes with a blue Energon Axe looking really, really good here. He comes with two smokestacks Looks like it's cast in red, painted that beige color. So hopefully over time that won't paint chip, but we know what that story is eventually. We do get a wee matrix of leadership that actually goes in that chest there. And we get, I guess, a truck mode uh, smokestack. That'll be how he incorporates it when he gets in the truck mode. And the figure himself, just looking really, really good out of the box. Not handled him much, but there's him looking all heroic there. We'll do a quick spin. And let's get him geared up, shall we? And here is Hemsworth Prime all accessorized up, showing off his matrix of leadership there inside. And from the side, you can see how his Energon Axe stores on his back alongside his other uh, smokestacks. That will be in the truck mode in one form or another there. Looking really good. Pretty good so far. Let's get that matrix covered up. After a small closer look, I do like that you can kind of simulate him holding that T-Tiny Winy in a deluxe class form. So there's that. Now let's back that camera off and show him looking all heroic on the turntable again with the storage there looking really really awesome and i'm going to try to create that one scene where he does this pose here next my crude reenactment and truly this is the best i could get him to look like that one scene there so anyway guys there you go he's looking pretty heroic on the turntable you can almost bust that pose with this figure, but this thing actually popped up and loose on there. So let's get him stood back up and go through that articulation real quick. And I gotta say guys, this articulation is a little bit different. It's kind of ambitious for a deluxe class size. Kind of hoping we do get a larger version that capitalizes over this deluxe version. And what do I mean by that? Let's just show you right here that he can get those heroic jumping flying poses, but then it also reveals some waffling right here in the shoulder area. That head sculpt is really, really pretty. I gotta give them props for that. And the fact that you can go all the way around on that ball and get it all that up there, that is, that's pretty, pretty spectacular. And then this is where we come into the, the arms and stuff. You can go all the way around, but it kind of gets clunky right here and it gets in the way. So, I mean, you can't go all the way around that way. You can get a full T this way, and it kind of does better than the Bumblebee movie one, but it's still, you know, I don't know the happy medium there. You do get like a little bit of a butterfly, 
depending on how you do the shoulders there. It's kind of neat how they, like they really did try really, really hard to give it everything it needs. You have no waist swivel, just to, and you got this little piece right here that will pop off. And it's kind of like a faux crotch piece, so you can get that kneeling pose if you want to. I was talking about earlier. If you get these arms back up here, I do believe you can get the full van damage, but it looks kind of really, really awkward. Well, it's not totally full, so there's that. And it's on the ball. I see this is what happens when they use the balls and not that universal thing that I was telling you about with the new age. And I guess it's two different things and all together, two different companies and ideological ways to get that to go and kick up that high and far. You can go back that far, but you will run into this and you will pop this little smokestack piece off several times. It's just very loosely held on there. And like I said, there again, it just comes flying off of there. So there's that aggravation and you got what well, it's, it's like, it's got a mushroom pig inside of the leg there and you can get all the way around at the knee there and it look, yeah, well you get a little bit of the ball there, but I don't understand this design philosophy because it's not spinning. It's just holding the knee on, but, uh, there's that you do get some toe tiltage there and some ankle tiltage at the bottom there and the only place that it spins is right here in the torso so it's not like a true waist <clears throat> like i said the waist is totally locked in and hollowed out in the back so that's that's my you know how i feel about the hollowed out pieces and parts and it comes from tad from his thing you kind of see how it unfurls in the process of showing off the articulation and that thing just popped off again and it pops back on but that's that overall, it's a little bit of a mess when it comes to articulation, but it still looks pretty heroic on the turntable, looking awesome. I'm gonna put the smokestacks back on real quick and show you what you're working with here. You got these two tiny, two tiny little tabs to go and post into this stuff right here. And it's just so aggravating to get this thing to do like that, to stay on there. It's, like I said, it's loosely held. And even before I could get it back into position, I'd just knock it off again. So there you go. Let's get him warmed up with his axe and see how that looks. And there he is with his axe. Looks really, really awesome until you get it to that angle. And then it reveals also again some more hollowness, but not bad. I mean, for a kid's toy. And that's what I got to try to remember and stop being so super critical on it. But I mean, I know for my first Optimus Prime, if it were me, I'd want it to be a, a better rendition of this, especially for my you know, nephews at this point. My son's all grown up and he ain't interested in this stuff anymore, but still a lot of fun to handle, play with, whatnot. So that's gonna get back down into transformation, which I don't do on camera. So let's get him into that vehicle mode and take a look at Transformers 1 Optimus Prime in vehicle mode. And here is Optimus Prime from Transformers 1 in his truck mode. And I'm having some mixed feelings on this thing already, guys. That transformation was not exactly fun per se, but it is a Cybertronian truck mode in its defense. And I can just go ahead and tell you right now that these pieces, as soon as I get through with this review, will be coming out. We're going to take a closer look at that right here. You can see the matrix of leadership inside of his cab mode there. I like the detailing for the most part on this. The axe has, this is good storage space for what it is, but then when you roll it over, it's essentially him just hunkering down, tabbing in, and it's probably one of the laziest Cybertronian alt modes I've ever seen. It's got some nice detailing on the inside of the hollow bits there, but I can't help but feel that this could have folded on down and around and uh, covered up those huge gaping holes there in his aft. And I guess he's gonna mow down the road and enforce some uh, justice there. I feel like this, for all intents and purposes, not trying to be too critical or cruel here, is a mockery of justice. It's just his robot mode's hunkered down and his head folds up neatly. That's about all I can say about that vehicle mode, guys. And it does, I mean, now that I'm holding it in hand, it looks all right. It's got these little wheel things, and they're like right here and right there. But other than that, it's just, you know, looking for the bottom. It's, it's just kind of lazy, guys. But 
It's a kid's toy, and I get that. I hope we get a better rendition of it. In not with the floppy bits that have to. Be, I, I I really can't stand. To be honest, I can't stand parts forming. So this is, it's tabbed on the good. It's tabbed on the best it's ever been. And then in doing so, I can't get that thing back off of there. So there's that, guys. And that has to come off of there to get back into robot mode. So I'm going to just do this off camera real quick. I think Optimus can motor on just fine without this bit altogether. It doesn't stay on in robot mode, so that's going to go file 86. But I still think it looks heroic like that. The axe stays away. It's in there. It locks in. It kind of helps it hold it all together a little bit better for it to be, like I said, just laid down and folded up into truck mode. <laughs> it's it's a neat take, and I. I can't stand the lazy when it comes to hollow bits. And, you know, that fact, it's like it's earth sparked engineered to be cyberversed in. And I hate using that analogy. But anyway, that's his truck mode. I think it does better without that little extra piece that just keeps flopping around. And I guess it was just a parts count kind of thing. All that said and done, let's get this guy into some final thoughts. Some final thoughts on the truck mode. It's the weakest link of the two modes here. That said and done, let's confirm the robot mode. And that robot mode just shines through and through. This is the strongest of two modes and some weak weapon storage, but looks better with it attached on. Like I said, I threw this other piece away and uh, I, this will go into the file 13 bin easily. I thought I actually did some smokestacks on the top, but no, it's pew pews on the front, totally useless. And uh, he looks heroic enough. I think he looks, that face sculpt is so very, very pretty. And uh, lack of emission of his hip or trying to throw it into the chest, that kind of aggravates me, but he still looks the part. It's a nice start for the younger Transformer fans, but not at what they're going for. I think it's $24.99. This is a $10 figure because they, they basically give it a studio series spin on the cyberverse slash earth spark technology with the ball joints and whatnot and even though the shoulders are neatly done but there's still too much I, yeah it's kind of like anyway i still like this figure quite a bit with its shortcomings and it's it's an heroic optimist even the beige forearms don't bother me as bad as i thought it would now that it's in hand and the beige doesn't look that bad either. I mean, it's a pre-earth mode, but then you can see the ugliness of the hollowness of the bits and things. And it, I, I still hope that we get a bigger version of this guy with all the possibility without the hindrances of that deluxe class Earth Spark Cyberverse engineering. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, all the stuff down below. Thanks again for watching this quick review of Transformers 1 Optimus Prime number 112 in the studio series, guys. Thanks again. Y'all have an excellent week out there. Till all are one.